So how have they typically gone, these presentations? We give our spiel and then Q&A for most of it. Is that how they've been going? Yeah, I don't know how long you guys um, are planning on talking. Um, but yeah, we'll just fill up. However long you guys talk, we'll just fill up the rest with questions. And we might find that there's not a ton. And if that's true, that's okay. Um, we ran into that um on Saturday and we just ended up ending a little bit early and if that's what happens here that's fine too cool it's very like I was saying before it's very hard to anticipate how many people will arrive is it a new um structure format to have the webinar style by topics a little bit hi everyone come on in see we have one we have one participant Carson, since you were Robertson, did you have to do orientation at both schools at the same time or one year at Duke and one year at UNC or when you went to UNC, you figured it out? Um, for switch semester, which was my sophomore spring, we had like a shortened abbreviated uh, version of orientation at UNC. But uh, since I joined as a, a freshman, we didn't have that, I guess, for the metrics for both campuses. But yeah, our... Um, switch semester was when COVID sent us home first. So it was cut a bit short, but I really, I really like that school <laughs> too. Now we have some people coming in. Hi everyone. We'll be getting started soon. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. We'll be getting started in just a few minutes. We just wanna make sure we give people plenty of time to come in and join us. Okay, it's um, 6.30, so I'll go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. I just want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, first and foremost, I want to congratulate you on your acceptance to Duke. We're thrilled to welcome you to all that we have to offer. And this particular webinar is going to be all about Duke sustainability. My name is Jessica Smith. I'm one of the senior admissions officers here at Duke, and I am joined by Jason Elliott and Karsten Fran. And they are, um, we have a student representative and a professional representative from Duke sustainability. And they're going to share with you um, the information that we have about Duke sustainability. Um, I do have just a few little housekeeping things. Um, first, we want to welcome you to this program. Um, we do want to let you know that if at any time you're participating in one of these events and you need additional accommodations, um, then you can contact Idella Hackett in our office. You'll see her email address and her phone number there, um, and she can certainly help you with any needs that you have. We also want to let you know that the session is being recorded and it's going to be available on our YouTube channel. And then with that being said, this is Duke Sustainability and I'm going to let everyone else take it away. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you, Jessica. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because we pulled together some slides to 
facilitate today's conversation. Um, so as Jessica said, I am Jason Elliott. I'm the Assistant Director for Sustainability at Duke University. And today I'm joined by Karsten Pran, a, a senior who's getting ready to graduate and leave us very, very soon. But he's been a part of our Green Devils since he first came to campus. And so you'll get to hear a little bit more about him and his experience. So we're starting, who is Sustainable Duke? Uh, we are an office of three sub-departments. First, campus sustainability, where I focus most of my work, thinking about ways that we can meet our carbon neutrality commitment by 2024, ways that we are working to reduce energy use, water use, um, reduce waste on campus as best as we can, and also a lot of academic-facing programs that we do where we teach classes, we engage with students, and we make sure that they find their place at Duke and with sustainability. We also have the Duke Carbon Offsets Initiative, which is the first initiative of its kind at a university in the United States. And its focus is thinking about projects that we can do around campus and off campus that reduce our emissions. And some of those might be urban tree planting projects that happen locally in Durham, North Carolina. We have also worked with um, waste to energy projects where we take um, animal waste and we turn it into renewable electricity. And there's many other ways that you can learn more about them on our website. And the last is our Duke Campus Farm. And this is a really great space. This is your farm at Duke University. So you're able to actually go and engage with them, whether you want to go and like pull weeds and harvest produce, whether you want to just go and be in a beautiful place and just decompress after a long day of classes, this is a space for you to definitely engage there. All of our collective mission is to educate and empower the Duke community to create a more sustainable future through social, economic, and environmental change on our campus and, and beyond. Uh, when we talk about sustainability, one of the Duke differences is we really do care beyond just thinking about environment, that we have the social and economic sustainability components because without all of those in um, working together, we can never come up with truly sustainable solutions. So what does sustainability look like at Duke University? First, student life. Here are um, our Green Devils where they ran a zero waste K-Ville program this past year for the students who are tenting um, for the basketball game. We also have tree planting opportunities that we have Durham community members, our staff and faculty and students all planting trees around Durham, particularly in areas that have been historically left out of having those types of trees and investments and infrastructure. We also have tons of activities that happen on campus where we will have um, events where people can swap clothes or where they can learn about sustainability or coming up on this Friday, we have our Earth Festival that we're very excited for because it has been a wonderful uh, Earth Month so far, but this is definitely one of the pinnacle events for that time. And there's also just tons of ways for students to get involved, even if they just wanna do it a little bit. Here's a picture of a Duke basketball game that we did a very long time ago where students are um, all dressed in their sustainable Duke t-shirts and um, bleed blue and lived green during that moment. In terms of academics, this is another fantastic way. You are students, you are looking to, to engage in classes. And so we have plenty of opportunities at Duke University for you to learn about climate and sustainability um, in your coursework. And so one of my favorite, which is a Bath Connections program, and what it does is it takes students and staff and faculty from different areas of campus and brings them together, together to work on an interdisciplinary project. And so in the past, I've kind of advised projects that are on um, developing building energy reports for on-campus buildings. We've done residential solarized Duke program. And we've also done things that are around um, like waste reduction on campus, ways that we are working and interfacing with the community. And next year we have a project that we will be doing climate resilience in Durham and the region. And so we're very much excited about these opportunities because we get to engage. Karsten was actually one of our students on one of our Bass Connections projects during his time here at Duke. The other thing that we have is a certificate in sustainability engagement, which is a certificate that takes coursework and pairs it with doing um, experiences. And so if you do you know, a summer internship or if you do on-campus work during the year or volunteer a lot, you can count all of that towards your um, end goal at Duke. And so this is a certificate, not dissimilar from having a major or a minor. It's just another thing that you can put on your resume. 
There's also, we are very unique compared to a lot of schools because we have our own marine lab. And there's tons of students who just go and either go out just for a little bit like a weekend or go out for a semester to learn about um, marine life and um, ocean safety in those spaces. And that's something that like, it is a really unique experience that you have access to. And I definitely encourage students to take advantage of it. And then the last photo in the bottom corner, that is our Granger Hall, which is the house of the Nicholas School of the Environment. And that is where you will find so many opportunities to work with faculty, other students, taking classes in climate and sustainability work. And so it's definitely a really great space, but wonderful thing about Duke is you will find climate and sustainability in every academic subject. Because at the end of the day, we are all working towards and have opportunity to work towards uh, sustainable futures. The other thing at Duke, Sustainable Duke created a campus as lab program because we want you to be able to take the opportunity to take what you're doing in the classroom and apply it to campus. And so there's tons of wonderful resources. Up in this top uh, corner over here is our reclamation pond, which is a really great space for you to learn about um, hydrodynamics. You can learn about plant life. You can learn about how we use um, stormwater collection ponds for other infrastructure, such as our uh, chilled water plant in the top right corner. And it's just an interesting way that we think about sustainability in all aspects of Duke University. Um, we've been working, as you can see, there's solar panels on top of this building, and our facilities department really takes it into heart how we're going to meet our goals going forward. Another one, as I mentioned before, we have a Duke campus farm, which is just a really great resource. Tons of students go out there for a lot or a little bit, and just a way to like get your hands dirty. But one of the wonderful things that they do is they also help serve as advisors for classes, and tons of classes will come out there and visit for a day or a week to learn more about food systems in the area. And then the last, our biggest campus's lab resource is our over 7,000 acre plus Duke Forest. I was a forestry graduate student at Duke University, and it was an invaluable opportunity to be able to go and engage and take what I'm doing in the classroom and actually learn about it in real time and real world. And so I highly encourage you, even if it's not a part of a class, being able to go on a run or a hike, it is right next to campus and it is for you to work and um, live in, not live in, but um, exercise, et cetera, in. And the last thing, which is something near and dear to me, this is what I do most of the time, is thinking about strategies and goals for Duke University. And so first and most important, one of our flagships is our carbon neutrality commitment by 2024. We are the earliest of our Ivy Plus peers by over a, over a decade. And that's a really exciting thing for us to kind of be leaders in that space um, with other universities that we're working with on many other topics. The other thing you can see that we have slowly been reducing our emissions since we started um, our data collection in 2007. This most recent year, we are 50% below what we were in 2007. And we're estimating that we'll get 75% uh, reduction of our internal emissions by 2024. And the remaining will be offset with our Duke Carbon Offsets Initiative work. We also kind of are moving billboards across campus are our buses. And so one of the great things that we've been doing slowly over time has been transitioning our bus stock to electric buses. And so you will see them when you come to campus. Here's one, a picture of what our sustainable Duke branded bus is. And we're gonna be slowly increasing the number of buses that we have that are run on electric, electricity um, over the next decade. And last, everybody eats. So it's important for us to think about sustainability and food at Duke University. And Duke Dining, our group at Duke who manages that, has a sustainability manager who's dedicated to making sure that we find ways to keep improving. Um, and so here's some like really important um, goals that we have, such as uh, making sure that our animal proteins were never treated with antibiotics, um, trying to increase the amount of food that we're purchasing locally, and food that is organic certified. So I'm now gonna pass it over to Karsten to kind of share a little bit about his journey at Duke University. Great, thank you, Jason. So yeah, everyone, hi, uh, my name is Karsten Prawn. I am a graduating senior, which is getting really exciting. Um, today, I submitted my thesis, uh, which I'll discuss just a little bit and how it connects to sustainability on campus. Um, but that's also very exciting. Um, 
my story with sustainability started uh, in high school. So I grew up in a place called Tustin, which is in Southern California. And throughout middle school and a large part of high school, there was a really big and intense drought um, in the region that I lived in. So we had to go under wa uh, mandatory water rationing and I had to uh, evacuate my house three times, I think that year of my senior year uh, because of wildfires. So I became very interested in uh, the governance of water, the science behind drought and um, environmental education. Um, so we, when I came to Duke, I wasn't exactly sure how studying that would go about. Um, tried on a bunch of different hats, um, as it were, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. Um, but one of the hugest parts of my Duke career um, has been taking a lot um, of advantage, taking advantage of a lot of the resources that Jason just um, laid out. Uh, the most prominent of those has been the Green Devils program for me. Um, so what I really like about this program is that it's a link to a administrative level understanding of sustainability. And I've been able to work on projects uh, with other groups of students, as well as with administration and faculty, which I find um, just a great opportunity. Um, so my freshman year in the Green Devils, um, Myself and a group of fellow Green Devils worked on a learning module, um, a virtual learning module that condensed the climate action plan uh, that Jason just outlined into a online learning module to make it a bit more digestible and widely accessible for the student population. Um, that was a wonderful opportunity not only to understand and digest the climate action plan for myself, but also to work with other Green Devils on an implementable project and uh, work on my communication skills when it comes to understanding the tenets of sustainability. Um, and then my sophomore year, I got the chance to lead the freshman cohort of new Green Devils, which was a great leadership experience. Um, and as I went throughout the Green Devils program, I was able to interact more and more with uh, the sustainable Duke staff, as well as the Board of Trustees at Duke, which has a, um, a campus sustainability committee that is specifically set up to integrate student voices, integrate professional voices, and administrative voices uh, to flesh out some very wonderful and implementable uh, sustainability goals, some of which Jason just uh, laid out. Um, and uh, let's see, I think, yeah, oh, that was the other thing I wanted to mention is that aside um, from sustainability, I'm very involved with the arts on campus. So it's been nice to have the opportunity to marry those passions through Green Devils as the communications intern, um, creating videos and posts and graphics. Um, I have an example of that in the next slide, which uh, I'll talk about soon. Um, but yeah, overall, there's um, many different ways and avenues to get involved with sustainability on campus, countless clubs, uh, countless ways to tie in your major, whatever it might be, into sustainability or apply it in such a way. Uh, so there is basically an overwhelming amount of opportunities and it kind of comes down to just trying things out and finding what's right for you. Um, I do want to mention uh, that I put my email down at the bottom in case anyone has any questions after uh, the Q&A and wanted to mention a bit about my thesis and how it ties into uh, my experiences with sustainability at Duke. Um, so through Green Devils and through some of the opportunities I've had to understand how Duke as an institution from a very high up level deals with uh, energy efficiency and deals with sustainability goals um, through Best Connections and Green Devils, um, I was interested in looking at how Duke, uh, the, the role that Duke plays in um, shaping the past and the current conditions of the Durham County water supply, of which it, it is the largest single consumer. Um, and that was really a wonderful process for me um, to tie in some of my personal experiences and, and tours and um, volunteer opportunities with my academic research in water governance and water science. Next slide, please. 
Great. So these, this is just my path and everyone has their own unique path, but I've found that some of these lessons are the ones that have stuck with me most as I prepare to graduate. Um, I spent a good amount of my freshman and sophomore year trying on a bunch of different majors and extracurriculars. Uh, I think this is a pretty common freshman year experience to be a bit overwhelmed and inundated with the amount of opportunities and resources that are here. So uh, that's a wonderful problem to have that there's just so much that you couldn't imagine taking advantage of all of the opportunities that Duke has within even four years. Um, so the process for me was, um, I, I guess I came into Duke wanting to fill up my plate once again, as it had been filled in high school and find my niche very quickly. Um, and I don't know, I think the, the piece of advice that I would give to any freshman, whether they're involved in, um, get interested in getting involved in sustainability or not, is to really just try things out and not get too hung up over making giant decisions. Um, the, the first couple months of uh, life on campus are intended to be uh, a lot in your face because there's a, a, lo a lot of opportunities that you want to have air of, um, but know that you'll be able to whittle that down over time. So the picture that I can included is uh, some chemistry, water chemistry equipment that I used for my thesis. Uh, and it just kind of speaks to my brief stint as a chemistry major. Uh, I tried on a bunch of, of different majors to try to see what fits and what was the most suited path for understanding and investigating the questions surrounding water governance and science that I had. Um, and in the end, I actually settled on a program too, which is, um, if you haven't heard of it before, it's a design your own major uh, where you can work with faculty and professionals to better uh, suit your academic major to the questions that you're interested in. Um, another piece of advice that I would have, um, and this would go for anyone, but specifically for people that are interested in sustainability, is that if you pursue seemingly unrelated activities or experiences, you will realize just how broad and applicable the field of sustainability is. Um, my freshman summer, and this is the pictures that I included below that point, um, my freshman summer I spent in a and I and NEH, so National Endowment for the Humanities teacher workshop in the Mississippi Delta. And I was the digital historian um, creating pamphlets and brochures and blog posts and videos. Um, and at first I was like, hmm, like how does this connect to water science uh, or water governance? And wasn't exactly sure how it would apply later on down the road. Um, but during that summer, I gained a lot of uh, digital art skills and um, mastered some of the Adobe suite uh, applications, which has come into, uh, come into play with my extracurriculars, including Green Devils, um, which I made that animated logo for. Um, so th the reason I go and mention that as it pertains to sustainability is that, like Jason mentioned, uh, any field of study can ultimately be tied back to sustainability. I think I had a relatively narrow understanding of what sustainability meant. Um, there was a large emphasis on environmentalism and environmental protection. And I quickly realized that there's a lot of different stakeholders, each with their own vocabulary and interests. And uh, it takes people that are specialized in, in those areas to bring about a, a general and sustainable goal towards environmental betterment. So I really expanded my concept of that uh, through Green Devils and through my studies as well. Um, and that ties into my major too, because I realized that I can't just study the environmental aspect of water governance or water, water science. I have to understand also history and some computer science and economics. So uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for how Green Devils and how the opportunities at Duke have uh, made my understanding of sustainability more dynamic. And I'm really glad that I'm able to equip skills that I thought were seemingly unrelated to my extracurriculars and jobs within the field of sustainability. Um, 
so yeah, that, that's me. Like I said, uh, you can reach out to me on email and I'm also happy to answer questions uh, during this session. Thank you, Carson, so much for sharing your perspective. So assuming you, you come to Duke, which we really, really hope that you do, some of the things that you can expect to look forward to this fall semester. For the first time ever, we're having pre-orientation programming around climate sustainability and also a farm to table program with our Duke campus farm, thinking more about food systems. And so all students will be participating in a pre-orientation program for that week. And we're really hoping that you will be wanting to join our group because it's gonna be really awesome. We are working with some uh, students right now to kind of define and, de um, define and decide what types of things we'll be doing that week. We also, Carson mentioned this earlier, we have a sustainability ambassadors program, which is a year long program where students can gain valuable sustainability knowledge and climate change knowledge to really expand what you're thinking and really dive into what Carson was mentioning, like all paths can lead to sustainability and climate change work. And so you can kind of find a way to see yourself and your passions in it. And we have our Green Devil students there standing by to mentor and advise as well as Sustainable Duke. There's also hundreds of courses on climate change and sustainability. I picked these three, one of them climate culture and identity, which is taught by Saskia Corns, who is the program uh, director of our Duke campus farm. Let's, let's talk about climate change is the first time that this course is going to be offered, but it's a university wide course. And it's a very timely topic for a lot of folks. And so highly encourage folks who are new to Duke to take this course. And if you wanna be learning more about climate change for future leaders, there is a course being taught by Alexander Glass, and you can definitely look into that one as well. But if you ever wanna see more, just send me an email and I can definitely connect you to others. Lastly, you can follow us on social media. I, we have an Instagram account at Sustainable Duke at Instagram, as well as a Facebook. And you can check out our website to better understand all the things that we are doing in sustainability at Duke. So now I think it's good time to have some space for questions from y'all, if you would be willing to chat those in. And if you have anything specifically you want to ask, always feel free to email us at sustainability at duke.edu. Hey, Carson, you Thank you both. So hopefully people are starting to think about their questions, but while they're thinking, um, I wanted to um, I wanted to ask Carson something. So there are a lot of students who are on this panel who are probably, you know, they're making decisions between lots of other schools. So I was sort of curious to hear from Carson as we always are, what was the Duke difference for you as you were thinking about your choices and all the great schools that you were admitted to? What made you ultimately want to come here? That's a great question and you're catching me at a good time because I've been doing a lot of reflection as I gear up to graduate. Um, but I think it, it comes back to the resources and the opportunities to really have anything for any idea uh, that, that you might have. So um, uh, earlier this year, I was working with the engraver uh, machine in the collab um, to create an art project. And that was just something that I was interested in learning about and learning a bit more about. Uh, my housemate just got into film photography and connected with an MFA student and is able to go into the dark room tomorrow, I think, to, to start learning about that process, even though they're just about to graduate as well. Um, the mentorship and the connection with faculty is really natural and I think that comes with having um, smaller class sizes. Um, for me, uh, the mentorship and the faculty connections began freshman year um, with my environmental introduction to environmental sciences and policy class. Uh, one of my favorite professors ever was teaching that class and really made it known that you can come at any point after class to ask questions based on the lecture or uh, she invited us sometimes to have talks with local community organizers within the field of environmental justice. Um, so I, I guess when, when I mentioned the, the good problem of having so many resources and so many uh, places and people to draw upon to grow. Um, that's a great and wonderful thing to have. And um, 
as, as I'm getting ready to graduate, I'm like, oh, there's so much stuff that I, I still wish that I had taken advantage of. Um, but I'm really grateful that, uh, you know, there's, there's offices and people that are so willing to help um, and really small and intimate settings in which growing and learning occurs that uh, creates a really conducive learning environment that enables you to craft your own path and to tie in seemingly disparate ideas into one career or academic goal. Great answer. Um, did you know about um, Duke's commitment to sustainability or was that one of the things that you factored into your decisions um, where, where you ultimately wanted to attend school? Um, I, I actually didn't know about the Climate Action Plan until I arrived on campus. Um, I went to the comment section um, as they were doing a, a bit of redrafting. That was another thing I really uh, drew me on board is that they had a, an open forum for students to come and voice their concerns and opinions. Um, uh, so I actually didn't know about it before coming to campus. Um, like I said, I just kind of came into um, freshman year having a vague idea of the academic questions that I was interested in, but not exactly sure um, on the details of how to pursue that. And it was through Green Devils that my involvement with engaging with and educating other students about the Climate Action Plan unfolded. Looks like we do have a question. Um, so one of the questions was, oh, who is the professor that you like so much from the environmental studies course? Yeah, okay, her name is Dr. Rebecca Vidra, uh, works in the Nicholas School. I'm not sure if she's teaching uh, undergraduate courses anymore. Um, they're working a lot in the Masters of Environmental Management program currently, but they uh, created and I began, uh, I believe began a pilot program for a Duke Engage in Durham surrounding environmental justice. So if you're um, wanting to engage with her, um, she always has an open ear for students, which is really wonderful, but also has that program if you're interested in getting engaged with environmental justice uh, in Durham and beyond. And then we have another question. Um, what were some of your favorite environmental classes, which you've already talked some about, and were there other organizations other than Green um, Devils um, that focused on sustainability for you? Yeah. Um, so as for the second question, there are a ton of environmental focused programs at Duke. Um, I'm dual enrolled at UNC through a scholarship program. So they have a uh, a couple environmental uh, groups there that I was involved in. Um, at Duke, I'm, I'm involved with the Green Devils and the Sustainability Ambassadors Certification Program, uh, the Campus uh, Sustainability Committee with the Board of Trustees, and then a few arts organizations, um, the Arts Annex Advisory Board. Um, sorry, what was, your, what was the first part of the question? <gasps> Just um, other oh, oh, environmental classes, oh, if there are right. other environmental classes. That's right. I really enjoyed the Bass Connections project that uh, Jason was advising um, because it was very applicable to Duke University data and applying some of the skills and concepts that I've learned in class to a problem that was on campus and generating um, those reports was a really wonderful uh, application of some of the theory that I had been learning in previous classes. Um, I'm a water nerd, so the water chemistry classes have been really fantastic with really wonderful lab components. Um, but I would say that outside of my major, some of the classes that I've enjoyed the most were classes that in retrospect really changed how I view the world, how I view myself and how I fit into that world. Um, one really good example of that is Intro to Global Cultural Studies. Um, that is through the GSF, Gender and Sexualities, I believe, um, program. But there are some classes that I, I ended up in basically because I like the idea of the synopsis. Um, and they ended up being some of the most formative classes um, in literature and in philosophy. Um, and I don't know, those, those classes have been, uh, have left a mark for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I was very intentional about including 
very interesting classes in my program too. Um, you can choose which classes that you want to take throughout your Duke career. Um, and there are many, many, many. Um, North American environmental history was very, very interesting, um, focused on the southeastern region of the United States and figured a lot into my thesis um, on, on Duke University's historical past too. Great. Well, sadly, we have come to the end of our panel. Um, I hope that you all, first of all, I want to thank so much um, the panelists um, who've um, taken their time to speak with us today about Duke sustainability. I certainly learned a lot. I hope you guys did too. Um, I see that we still have a few questions. Um, if you would, I hope that you have jotted down Jason and Karsten's email addresses. I'm sure that they would be happy to answer your questions. Um, but we want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we hope that you make the choice to come to Duke. We would love to see you here. Thanks so much and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Bye, y'all.